I've been hearing a lot lately about issues and proposed changes to how the Atlantic Coast Menhaden fishery is managed and decided to check it out. My first stop was with Rich and Brame with the Coastal Conservation Association to get a briefing. The Menhaden industry is one of the, the oldest industries. Uh, when we got involved in the late 1990s, the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission had just gotten their management authority to, over, to have some authority over managing Menhaden. And we saw immediately that their Menhaden Management Board, which is usually comprised of scientists and state fishery directors, had the Menhaden industry sitting on the board that managed them. So we set about as our first goal, changing the management of Menhaden to everything else, which we succeeded in the mid-2000s, and got a cap on the harvest in the bay. And now we have an allocation by state. So slowly but surely, Menhaden are starting to be managed. These natural resources belong to everybody don't belong to any specific person or any specific company. And when you have industrial scale fishing, it skews the ability to kind of manage them for everybody. Menhaden are especially important because they convert sunlight into protein. They, 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 they're the, the, the key link in the chain. And we're managing them like we manage striped bass, bluefish, single species management, using single species models to determine the abundance and what can be harvested. And the problem with the Menhaden is they are a lower trophic order species. I mean, they're, they're, that's why there's a bunch of them around because they, their role in life is to be eaten. In that sense, every Menhaden matters. It's not like there's surplus production and there's excess fish. Every fish, even if it's not around to, to, to add to the spawning stock, which is the key measure we look at in models, it's there to be eaten. All the Menhaden matter. One of the problems is we, we manage for maximum sustainable yield and that, by definition, is you, you fish a population down so it begins to reproduce better, has less density-dependent factors. And that's not what we want with Menhaden. We want maximum abundance. And in fact, in recreational fisheries, we want maximum abundance of fish, maximum practical abundance. You can say what they want. They are at a, low, a lower level of abundance than when, certainly when I was a kid fishing the Topsail Beach. We used to just see school after school of Menhaden go by, and you just don't see that anymore. For about 80% of, of the allocation of the coastwide Menhaden harvest is allocated to the state of Virginia. And most years, they catch the majority of that in the lower bay. So there's the question of whether or not, you know, those removals, if they were done over the entire coast, would certainly have less of an effect than they're done in a certain, a very small area, which is near the mouth of Chesapeake Bay and up in the bay. We don't know if that's a problem or not, but common sense would tell you that it could be. After listening to Richen's alarming briefing, I wanted to see for myself how localized industrial fishing methods were affecting the Menhaden in the east coast of Virginia off the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. Right now we're about 70 miles from Reedville, Virginia. We're off the eastern shore of Virginia. The entire hull of that boat is full of Menhaden. The company that, that owns that boat will catch about 400 million pounds of Menhaden in Virginia this year. They didn't come out here 70 miles because the bay is full of menhaden. The bay should typically be full of menhaden this time of year. However, there are none. They'll take and pull nets around the entire school of bait. Anything that's around that school of fish will get captured in their nets. See how the water inside of that net looks brown? And all them birds? There's tens of thousands of pounds of menhaden in there right now. Essentially anything that swims that eats menhaden is around these schools of menhaden. Everything gets squeezed together and everything that's in there gets compressed together and dies. We see a complete decimation of our fisheries in Virginia because of this right here. Those menhaden look like they're four inches long. They're killing them before they even get a chance to spawn. Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in the cont contiguous United States. It used to be a very fertile ground for, for uh, nursery areas, breeding areas and stuff for all sorts of life. Technology has, ta has taken over where um, what they're doing now is flying around in airplanes and taking out big ships and they'll, they'll see the schools from the air. And it's just such an effective means of fishing. You can, you can virtually go out there and, and really um, wipe out the, the stock. The reason they're so important is because they're planktivores. They feed on plankton, so they're that link in the food chain from plankton to everything else. You take out your planktivores from an ecosystem, you're stuck at plankton level. For so long, we have taken from the resource without giving back, and it's, and it's, it's, not, it's not unlimited. It's not, you know, it's not an unlimited resource. It is a limited resource, and we have to come to grips with that re reality. After seeing it for myself, I wanted to hear what others had to say. If you look scientifically, menhaden recruitment, which is the number of small fish entering the bay, has been down for about 20 years now. Small menhaden, which a lot of 
people refer to um, as uh, finger size Menhaden, uh, they really have not shown up in the bay like they used to, and that's what really fuels, you know, our striped bass population, our speckled trout population, things like that. Summer flounder love them as well. So it's uh, it's been a real concern for us for a long time, and it's why CBS has been involved in this issue. What size fish are we catching, and are we catching those big fish, which are the ones the fishery should target, the ones that are migrating back and forth, or are we catching some of the smaller fish at times? You know, we, we hope that the regulations that are in place now will let those smaller ones go. You know, when we talk about fisheries management, we always want fish to be able to spawn at least once before we catch them, and that's a lot of what we want to do with Menhaden as well. You would hope that the fishery management would be science-based, and we'd be looking that science to help drive the, the right decisions and it sounds like it's much more political. But the concerns that the conservation community has is the fact that we don't have really good science on the Chesapeake Bay region. We don't do a stock assessment in this this fairly small area. Unfortunately though, about 85% of the catch is actually called either around the mouth of Chesapeake Bay or in Chesapeake Bay itself. So that's really hampered our efforts in terms of better understanding the population in Chesapeake Bay um, in any given year or just outside of the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. There's at least enough evidence that shows us we should be concerned about the number of men in the Chesapeake Bay region and are there enough to serve that ecological role uh, to be eaten by all those other those species that want to eat them. Now we need to bring the best available science in there and, and think about managing this as a forage species because it is so important out there in the ecosystem. Um, and that's not to say we can't have a fishery, but uh, we need to make sure we do it in a manner that doesn't negatively affect all the other important connections of Menhaden and the food web. The biggest question is what can people do? Then get involved with conservation groups that are, that are working on this. There's a large, not only CCA, but Chesapeake Bay Foundation, the Kew Charitable Trust, is working on managing Menhaden. Forage fish have become a hot issue. So I would just get involved, join a local group, get involved with your local fishing club. We do it right, it's, it, things can definitely come back. It's been seen time and time again, so there's always hope. Yeah. We have a real opportunity to change things for the better. Before it's too late, we urge you to tell the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission to manage Menhaden as part of an ecosystem not just as an industry.